traveled to Timbuktu from every corner of the African continent and many parts of the world in pursuit of knowledge and trade. <laughs> The University of Timbuktu was organized around three great universities, University of Sankori, Jingadabir, and Sidi Yahya. Jingadabir University was built nearly 700 years ago under the rule of Mansa Musa in 1325. It became the city's central mosque. Every Friday, nearly 10,000 people prayed at the Jingadabir University. The Sankori University, which lies in the northeastern part of Timbuktu, was first built by the Mandinka people around the 12th century. A Wangara or Mandinka woman financed Sankori University, making it the leading center of learning in Africa at the time. The University of Timbuktu had four degrees or levels in its curriculum. The primary degree. At this level, the students learned and mastered volumes of books of sciences, including the Holy Quran, learned the Arabic language, and learned to communicate and write effectively in various African languages. The secondary degree. At this level, the students are introduced to the different branches of knowledge grammar, jurisprudence, mathematics, geography, history, physics, astronomy, chemistry, and the science of the purification of the heart, soul, and mind. The students also spend time learning a trade. University trade shops offer classes in business, carpentry, farming, fishing, construction, shoemaking, tailoring, navigation, and much more. The superior degree. The curriculum was highly specialized. The students would study under the guidance of a professor. It involved advanced research and extensive writing. Graduation was based upon a student's excellent moral character and his mastery of the sacred knowledge. The circle of knowledge. This was the elite group of imams, scholars, and professors. It was here that the most important and crucial issues of the empires and the world were discussed and debated. Leaders of the time, such as Askia Muhammad of the Songhai Empire, Mansa Musa of the Malian Empire, Sheikh Ahmadu of the Fulani Caliphate of Masina, the emirs, and the sultans of the provinces of the Sudan, sent crucial questions to the scholars of Timbuktu. <laughs> scholars who received questions would make copies then distribute them among the members of the circle of knowledge. Each scholar would individually research the issue. When they were all done, they would gather together and share their answers which would later be published in manuscripts. The manuscripts described in great detail the questions or issues and then the responses were given by the scholars. The Timbuktu manuscripts are the greatest find since the Dead Sea Scrolls. The Timbuktu manuscripts are a symbolic representation of the impact and influence of the early schools and universities that existed in West Africa. Everyone who truly cares and appreciate the effort to preserve an African legacy <laughs> An academic legacy. And a spiritual legacy are obliged to help save the endangered manuscripts of Timbuktu. Yes, 
There are 700,000 original manuscripts in Timbuktu and neighboring cities that are on the verge of being lost if the appropriate action is not taken. These manuscripts represent a turning point in the history of Africa and its people. It's called Dray al-Khayrat. Dray al-Khayrat has been written 700 years ago. 700 years ago. Incredible, incredible. The translation and publication of the manuscripts of Timbuktu will restore self-respect, pride, honor, and dignity to the people of Africa and the descendants of Africa. It will also destroy the stereotypical images of Africa as primitive and underdeveloped. These manuscripts of Timbuktu are a living testimony of the highly advanced and refined civilization in sub-Saharan Africa. Before the European Renaissance, Timbuktu flourished as the greatest academic and commercial center in Africa and the world. Great empires such as Ghana, Mali, and Songhai were proofs of the talents, creativity, and ingenuity of the African people. This is a hole that they have put on at the top of the roof, so that you can see uh, you can see inside. It's like a, it's, a, it's, a, it's like a window for for the wind to get in, and it makes it cool. Makes the masjid very very cool. This is how they have it at the top of the masjid. Hmm? They have these little holes, and this is the ventilation system. The ventilation that was created for generations, for centuries, before air conditioning came about. The University of Timbuktu produced both black African scholars and leaders of the highest rank, character, and nobility. The manuscripts of Timbuktu cover diverse subjects such as mathematics, chemistry, physics, optics, astronomy, medicine, Islamic sciences, history, geography, the traditions of the prophets, government, legislation, and much more. Today, this entire African legacy is on the verge of being lost. The brittle conditions of the manuscripts, pages disintegrate easily like ashes, the termites, insects, weather, piracy of the manuscripts, and the selling of these treasures to tourists for food money. All of this pose a serious threat to the future of the manuscripts of Timbuktu. I think the Timbuktu Educational Foundation will play a great role in the renaissance of the African history. That's why the Malian government uh, is pleased to endorse this initiative and uh, we invite you also to participate to this great initiative. Thank you very much. I would like to introduce to you Iman, Iman W. Dean Muhammad. Timbuktu Educational Foundation is appointed and mandated by the government of Mali and the official authorities of the city of Timbuktu as agents and legal caretakers of the manuscripts of Timbuktu. This is indeed a very historic occasion and one that my spirit and soul welcomes with rejoicing. The manuscripts represent uh, probably the most significant opportunity in this century for humanity in general, but Africans in particular, to learn the truth of African civilization, African people's knowledge and contributions to world civilization. In the 1800s, there was a turning point in the history of Timbuktu. During colonization, thousands of manuscripts were burned and confiscated. However, Scholars kept hidden original copies in their private libraries. Today, there are hundreds of thousands of original manuscripts still buried, but not forgotten, in the sands of time. In the African world, 
our history has been most of the time distorted, and more particularly the history of education. And uh, with this uh, Timbuktu Educational Foundation, this is a time for us to recover what has been lost, but to do it in a very chronological way from the time immemorial to nowadays. Based on the 700,000 manuscripts that the foundation wants to restore, preserve, translate, and publish, each concerned individual sponsored one manuscript, we would secure the funds needed to allow the foundation to undertake its activities and programs, and thus rewrite the history of Africa and its people. The, the Timbuktu Foundation, it seems to me, is uh, a critical step in this, this long, long trek that African people have been going through in order to find our way back to ourselves. Um, I think that uh, Africa's natural developmental trajectory was, was distorted or derailed or, um, or in some senses even aborted. And Timbuktu, particularly with, its, uh, with the holdings of those, uh, those ancient texts, is a good place to begin to go back and hear Africa's voice and then get us back on track because we have to, we have to understand who we are as African people and not these sort of mutations that have been the consequences of chattel slavery and, uh, and colonialism. The mission of the Timbuktu Educational Foundation is to resurrect to its rightful place the contributions of Timbuktu scholars in the annals of world history. The first phase of this project is to restore, preserve, translate, and publish the manuscripts of Timbuktu. Within the first phase, we will restore the historical buildings which house the University of Timbuktu. The second phase is to reopen the University of Timbuktu with its classical methods of teaching. أن يكلل مساعيكم وجهودكم بالنجاح والفوز المبين وأن ينصركم نصرا عزيزا ويفتح لنا ولكم. The third phase is the opening of a branch of the University of Timbuktu in the U.S. utilizing the same classical methods of teaching. And finally, to promote tourism, educational and cultural exchanges between the peoples of Africa, Americans, Europeans, and others. And this is where we are. We began to work on the, on, on the issue. Today we are here. Today we are, we are actually rewriting, or better said yet, today we are uh, restoring the history of that we have lost. Because all along we have let, let people to write the history for us. We know that whenever a person, somebody else writes your history, he will not give you the correct history. And today, this is a memorable time. It's time for us to celebrate. I'm so excited because we are actually making a history.